Hello everybody and welcome back. I am here today to do a video to show how I made my laminated cover. Uh, somebody watched my previous video where I was just finishing off decorating the inside and putting this together and somebody asked if I had a video um, on how to make this. Uh, now I hadn't put a video together um, so I said that I would do one um, and I think what I'm going to do is actually half this because this is a very chunky journal. Um, I'm actually going to make another one and then I can take some of these innards out and put them in the second journal. So I'm going to go through step by step how I put this together. Uh, so the first thing I needed to do was obviously uh, measure the size. So this is the height of my pages because I'm using... Uh, the smaller size uh, from my kit so if you imagine an A4 sheet which is what we use here in the UK or letter size if you're um, in the US uh, but this is half of that size uh, and then I fold it in half again and then this is the size of the journal that I have so obviously this is far too tall um, so you can do many things you can either just go from the bottom and then trim it down or you can kind of gauge where you want the pattern and what it is that you want to see um, on your cover. So I think I'm going to try and trim roughly in the middle so that I get some of the lace. Uh, and on the other side of this, um, I've actually printed two sheets. Uh, this is going to be my inside. I could possibly use this as my cover, but I think I'm going to use that as my inside again. Um, you can print... Um, back to back because it is going to be laminated but just for an extra bit of sturdiness I'm going to have two sheets of paper um, and then all I'm going to do is just lay them back to back like that just to kind of make it easier so as I say the first thing I need to do is just get the size right so I'm just going to bring in my piece of paper again I obviously want it a little bit taller uh, so let's grab a pencil I'm going to use this as a bit of a guide as well um, because obviously this is taller than this because I need to be able to fit the elastics in. So as you can see, my... Um, sorry, I have to do it this way so you can actually see. Uh, my eyelets are either side of the height of this page. So my cover does actually need to be taller than these pages. So I'm going to use this as a bit of um, a gauge and I'm just going to bring it down ever so slightly. So I think I'm going to trim it here. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to trim it about here and maybe about where that kind of lace is there. So I'm just going to make a mark there on my paper and then I've got a mark down here. So um, I'm not going to take anything off the edges. I'm just going to trim the length because on this one I wrap around the back to make a pocket and I want to do the same thing again. So I'm not going to take anything off the length. Uh, while I'm trimming this one, I'm also going to trim this one just because it's easier. So I'm going to bring in my trimmer. I'm just going to go along those marks. Just making sure that both sheets are lined up. So that's one edge. Just rotating it round. This time my mark is down the bottom, but again just lining it up and trimming it off. Okay, so that's the height. Now I do want to keep these bits because for this uh, closure I just use the offcuts from this. So this is actually the perfect width again so you can either again put these back to back or you can just fold these over which I think is what I did with that one so I'm just going to see how long I made this because I can't quite remember uh, so about four inches so I'm going to do the same on this one so it's four inches. So I'm just going to move it in five because I want to kind of fold it over to again give it that stability. So I'm going to fold it about there. And then if I want it about four inches, I'm going to be folding it about here. 
Now it doesn't matter if there's a little pencil mark on there because I do ink over this anyway and I'm going to round the corners so chances are that pencil mark will be uh, disappearing soon. And then roughly there is where I want to tear it off. Okay, so that's going to be the band that kind of goes through the middle. I'm going to get rid of those. Um, and then obviously you need to think about that pocket. So if I, I'm going to take the innards out of this just so it's easier for you to see the cover. And take those out. So obviously once this is in its laminating pouch it will go to about here and then this is going to be the bit that gets folded over. Now if you think that this is going to be too much of a deep pocket you can of course adjust the size. I'm just going to keep it the same just because it is easier. Um, what I am going to do is round the corners. That's what I did last time. So I've got this one that has the three different rounds. So I go for the largest one for this particular point. Now it's not necessary, it's optional. Um, you don't have to glue these together, you can just literally pop one inside of the other and then once it's in the laminating fold it will kind of hold in place. Uh, or you could pop some glue down, I literally just put um, a couple of lines of glue just to kind of hold it together really. So I'm going to flip that over, I've got so much going on on my desk at the minute and I'm literally just going to put three lines of glue, two up the edges and one through the middle and then I'm just going to pop that on top and it just stops it from wriggling around because obviously I don't want that white edge like I'm doing at the moment so you just want to try and line it up as best you can like that Um, and then this one I do actually want to glue. Oops, might help if I unroll it a little bit. And then totally optional, I am going to ink that edge. And then pop that down. Okay, I'm also going to round these corners. Now obviously I don't want to go uh, quite as round as this because they are obviously small corners. But I am going to do the seven. So I'll start up at this end. So that's my corners rounded. So all I did last time was just go round and give it a bit of an ink. This part again is optional. You absolutely do not have to. Uh, you don't even have to use digitals. You could use scrapbook paper if that's what you've got as well. Like I said, I just like the lamination side of it because it just makes it more durable, more sturdy. Uh, then I'm going to ink around this one as well. Actually, while I'm inking, I'm just going to switch on my uh, laminator, which is just to the side of me, off camera. So I'm sorry if you can start to hear a little buzz as it's firing itself up. But yeah, this just kind of gets rid of those white edges if you have uh, any edges showing. And I've just gone for a slightly grungier look this time. So that's why I'm also going for the darker one as well. So this is a uh, ground espresso. And I really love this colour. It's a lovely dark chocolatey brown colour. Or I guess coffee if it's ground espresso. But I don't drink coffee. I drink hot chocolate. So that's what it reminds me of. Now 
Right, there we go. So, I'm just going to get rid of some of these cuttings. Okay, then all we need to do is just pop this into the laminating folder. So just to make it easier, um, I tend to go reasonably close to the bottom edge and obviously tucking it in as close as it goes up here. Then as you can see, there's a huge gap at the top here. That's where this one is going to go. Um, so you just pop that in at the top. going to move some things back and then obviously you just uh, need to run it through your laminator so I'm just going to do that um, and then I'll come back and I'll show you when it's all cut out and things okay so now that that is laminated we just need to do some trimming uh, so I just use my trimmer you can use scissors or a craft knife whatever it is that you feel comfortable with but you're just going to go around and don't cut obviously right up to the edge but just cut close to it uh, on each of the edges um, if you've got a, a powerful enough sewing machine you could even stitch around if you wanted to um, that is also an option So for the edges, I am just going to use scissors. Just because it's a bit easier. Okay, so there's that one um, and then for this one obviously I want to round these corners as well so a little trick um, quite a lot of times punches do not like either thin papers and they don't like um, laminating pouches I think because they're just too soft and flexible it normally likes um, card best so from my scrap card and you can see the corners already rounded on there um, what I do is I just line it up with the corners uh, and I did the big one for this, didn't I? And then you just use that to help with the punch and then it will punch through your lamination as well. Uh, that's the same if you've got a thin piece of paper, something that's quite delicate. Um, vellum sometimes is a bit fussy with punches. So this is a good trick to kind of cut those off. So I just use, like I said, a scrap card and then just use that to help. And then the last one, there we go. Right, let's just sweep all that off to the side. Okay, next um, you're going to need a scoring board. So I've got my large one here. Um, So I just need to decide which way up this is going. I think I'm going to have this at my top. Now I'm going to bring this one in as a guide. Now normally when you score you obviously create a valley, a dent, and then you fold away from the valley so you fold it backwards. And that's not as easy to do on um, things that have been laminated so normally where you've kind of made that indent that is then where your fold will be so I'm just going to use this one as a guide so this one goes to four and a half so that's where I'm going to have my first fold so at four and a half I'm just going to press down and I'm going to do that three times there um, and then I am going to make a crease in that already So there's the first one and then the next one 
is at the line before the five. So that's where my next one's going to be. So again, I'm going to do the same thing just three times. And then making that fold like so. And then the last one. Oops. So the last fold then is the one after nine and a quarter. So it's the line in between one and a, uh, nine and a quarter and nine and a half. So that's going to be my next one. So again, just going to three times do that and give it a fold. Okay, let's put this away. Okay, so the next few things you're going to need is um, a crocodile. You're going to need some eyelets, some elastic and some really strong double-sided tape. So I'm using um, this red one, which I know holds really, really well. So the double-sided tape is for this pocket to seal it. Um, I've not known a glue that is good enough to hold um, the laminate together. Uh, if you have a really strong glue that does that, by all means use that. Uh, but I haven't found one that works really, really well. So all I'm going to do is pop my red tape and I'm not going right up uh, to the crease. And then I'm just going to, because obviously I've got rounded corners, so I'm just going to cut that tape at a slight angle. I'm going to do the same down here at the bottom. So again, as we start coming to the top, I'm just going to cut that at an angle. Okay, so that just gets folded over. Give it a nice press. That's your back pocket. Okay, so double-sided tape done. Uh, then we're going to punch our holes. So I kind of set this to like a quarter of an inch. And then you just kind of aim roughly for the middle of that spine and do the same at the bottom. Now, if you're doing the middle hole, you're going to need the Crobtile Big Bite. So I'm just going to grab my one of those. So you're going to need one of these because these reach right in. Uh, so I'm going to go roughly for the middle. Now, the best way to do this is to actually mark it with a pen. So I'm just going to grab my pen and have a look where halfway is. So it's about six and a half tall, so three and a quarter. So about there is where I want my hole. Okay, and then once you've done that, might as well use this one. You're going to then set your eyelids. So just pop them in each of the holes. Okay, and then you can set them. Okay, so that's my three set. Then going to use my elastic. So obviously I want to be able to tie a little bit. And then I want the length of the book. So that simply just gets slotted through there. And I'm gonna tie my knot. So you want it obviously tight so it just starts to stretch but you don't want it overly um, stretched otherwise uh, you'll find that it eventually 
it will lose its elasticity completely and it won't hold your sig signatures in at all so just a little bit of stretch is fine uh, I'm going to not tighten that too much because obviously once I've got my signature in I can really kind of test it um, and then obviously for this piece what I normally do is I just kind of wrap around the journal and again I just want a bit extra so I can tie my knot and I put one either side of that uh, obviously I don't want it either side of this one because I don't want to tie it to that uh, but I then just give it a little tester now this bit is a little bit fiddly because you want to be able to kind of wrap this around but also you don't want to let go of this either so I just kind of have one finger holding that pull this around just to make sure that that's kind of tight enough that's kind of where I want it and then I know that my knot needs to be about here so again I'm just going to use my pencil I'm just going to mark on the elastic just so I can pull it out a little bit and tie my knot and I'm just kind of looking for where my pencil marks are give it a little pull again I'm not going to make it too tight because I just want to check that that fits around there and closes it nicely which it does oh I'll tell you what I forgot to do I haven't put this on that was clever so first of all let's punch some holes in it that's another reason why you don't want to pull these too tight so I am going to do the same on this one so I'm just going to punch my holes in I'm going to undo this knot see everybody makes mistakes in journal making right, so I'm going to take that off um, and then it's going to go in and out like so and then we start again one on each side so one in there actually sorry, I'm being picky but I want it that way up and then that one's going to go on that side And then when I pull these through, still got my pencil mark, so that helps me know where my knot's going to be. So I just do it again. Another good reason to have your pencil marks. Okay, again, I'm not tightening it too much because I just want to double check. That fits around there and that holds it closed like that. So that's how my journal looks. So I can open it up. I'm now going to give this a good tighten. I can snip off the extra bits and before I snip off this I want to get my signature in so um, I printed off just another one of these pages and I've literally split it in half so I just grabbed um, I think I had 10 pages in total so I've got now five in each uh, so I'm going to find the middle which is somewhere there it is, so there's one middle. That one can go in there. That's a bit better, isn't it? That doesn't feel quite so bulky and stuffy. So that's the first one. And then we've got this one, which we also want to find the middle for. There it is. And pop in under our elastics like so and again that all fits really nicely so I can come back to the middle and snip those off oh, just gonna make that a little bit tighter give it a pull snap those off uh, another thing that I was thinking is my 
mini journals I was kind of struggling of where to put them but I'm thinking I might put them in here in the middle so I'm just going to slot that in there so I've got a little mini journal in the middle of that one and where were those tags that were at the back here they are so I'm going to have since I've got the man I'm going to have him tucked in the back of that one that's that journal and then this one again I want the mini in the middle oh I got this upside down yep that way round with the tag at the back like so and then that coming over so those are my two journals well i hope that you have found this video useful thank you so much to the person that requested me to do this um it was great one because i get to show you my process but two um i was able to actually divide up my journal because i did feel it was a bit chunky just in one um so now i've got two journals um, and I really love them because they're one nice and shiny, they're nice and smooth and I know that I can carry them around um, and they're not going to get all kind of scratched up. If you ever have any other suggestions or requests on videos that you would like to see, if there's something you've seen in a previous video but I didn't perhaps show you step by step and you would like to see that, of course just drop me a comment down below. Um, on the few occasions when people have done that I have produced a video um, relatively quickly after the request. I know lots of people do like to see the full process, so I'm absolutely happy to do those videos if you want them. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you all in the next crafty video. Bye for now.